and welcome to Alpha Money TV. Today we're going to be talking about credit karma. So in a nutshell, it's about how to rectify your credit karma, how to make your credit report better and also increase your credit score. And with me to explain all those interesting things is Maya Deval and he is with My Budget Fitness. He does a lot of other things and I'll let him explain what he does. <laughs> Hello, Angela, and we've developed a couple of concepts. I'm a practicing attorney and we developed a couple of concepts. One is the rent to buy concept where you can rent a property first and then during the rental period you can improve your credit score, your affordability. Then we went out to develop the concept of My Budget Fitness because we saw that a person that is renting with an opportunity to buy must get his budget fit, otherwise the bank won't approve a home loan. And then we developed tools like uh, Mobile to Budget to help you to track your spending because you need to build up a good credit score. Mm -hmm. And from there on we realized, well, we need to educate people how to buy a house. And then we started with house, home ownership education or home buyers education. And uh, that's basically in a nutshell what we do. Wow. And I'm doing work with Maya as well around the whole home buyers education stuff. So, Maya, what is a credit report and how does a credit report differ from your credit score? Well, a credit report is actually a reflection of your past treatment, how you treated your credit accounts over the past couple of years. You sometimes have a thin credit profile. A lot of people come to us and say, I've got a bad credit score. And we say now, well, what's going on there? He said, well, I've got no accounts on my name. And we ask him, now, come and let's, let's analyze your credit score. And we see that they've got a thin score, a thin file. And the thin file means that they've got no history or in, in, information on their credit score. It means that the credit bureaus can't trace any information how they spent their money up to the past few years. And therefore, you actually have a negative score. So the bad thing is that you've got to go out and open store accounts or credit cards. But very importantly, treat these accounts with care. Pay your accounts rather earlier, two days earlier than later. Because this information stays on your credit profile for up to two years. Mm -hmm. And if you miss a payment, immediately you are downgraded. Mm, interesting. Why do credit scores matter and what, what range would you consider to be a good credit score? Every bureau has got a different scorecard. Oh. So you've got to look into the scorecard. Some, some of them um, work on a score of 700, some of 900. So you can't actually say getting a score from one to the other one is a good score. Yeah. The nice thing what the credit bureaus have started to do, and some of the companies that also compile two or three or four reports in one, is that they give you almost like a dashboard, like a petrol indicator. If you are red, you are got a low score. If you yes. are orange, you average. And if you are green, then you know that you've got a good score. So it's quite important to work on to those scores. But a credit score, a green one, doesn't always um, indicate that you'll get a home loan. Yes. Because that credit score is married or combined with your affordability. Yes. And at the end of the day, the combination of those two will indicate if you can get a home loan. Yes. But if you have an average credit score, that means that you are measured over the average population in South Africa. We have about 20.2 million credit active customers in South Africa and we look at see that about 37-35% um, of them has got a good score that means green yeah. and the rest of them are, are about orange and red and all that. But if you could give us a figure, like I'm always very fascinated by this because personally I, I assume I've got a good credit score now but wow because I qualified for a home loan but what range should people be looking at in terms of just a number? Is 700 a good credit score? I mean, yeah, I'm not going to be able to answer that because I say you're going to look at different credit bureaus. Yes. And then one, like a copy scan, would be maybe out of 700. And then if you have 655, that would be a good score. Oh, so it depends rather on the, the credit bureau. That's right, yeah. And it's interesting that some of them have a score out of 15. And it means out of 700 people, you would have, your percentage would be on top, or average, or below. Oh. So rather what I would suggest is go and draw your credit score. And then if you work with a bureau that gives you a good analysis, you'll immediately see that you have a good score. Okay. But again, that, don't steer yourself blind at that credit score, yes. because it will actually um, 
sometimes it can be misleading because sometimes you deal with a bank and they have an appetite for a particular month to expand their business. Sometimes yes. they are very restrictive in their approach. Yes. And then even if you've got a good score, you think, why am I not being qualified? So it's, it's a different, I can't list everyone, but I would just go and say, do the credit report and you'll get an indication if you've got a good score or a bad score or an average score. Okay, okay. So how do you build credit? I mean, for someone like me, what, what would you advise for someone like me who was in my shoes uh, two, three years ago when you're just drowning in debt, you're trying to figure yourself out, you're trying to build a company, so your credit score sucks. How do you go about building a good credit score? It takes time. The yeah. problem lies that if you have missed one payment, that information stays in your credit profile for up to six months. So whatever, even if you win the lotto today, you get a windfall from a bonus or anything from a parent, a payment, and you pay up all your debt, that payment that you slipped up to pay stays on your credit profile for up to six months. Wow. Now, what happened last year in April, we got the credit amnesty. And with amnesty, it's almost like your score or some of the bad things on your credit score has been fixed out for those that can still remember the good old days of tipics. <laughs> so it's like you come to a to a bank and you apply for credit and all of a sudden you've got some empty spaces in your credit score and because they can't trace back what happened with your credit in the last six months or 12 months they now start to wonder what went on on this person's profile and because they can't pick up any information there they actually start uh, having question marks about question marks about you and therefore it takes longer to provide credit or alternatively the moment that there's a risk element involved they increase your credit uh, interest rate. Okay. So we actually see a reverse uh, situation that happened that people thought it's going to be easier to have access to credit yes. with amnesty coming in and now it's actually reverse all it takes longer, it's more expensive. Wow. So your credit score is actually made up about four or five components. The one is the length of your credit, okay. the other one is how you treat your credit, do you pay regularly and on time, mm -hmm. the amount of your credit yes. and then again, um, again your recent, most recent applications it also goes into your um, last year or two applications that you submitted where you're successful. Sometimes people go on a Saturday morning, they decide to go to a particular retail store. Mm -hmm. They start applying like three or four accounts and maybe mm -hmm. two of them will approve. But that shows they had applications for four credit applications. Wow. And that means that you are shopping around for debt. Oh wow. So it means like you're a little bit desperate here. Yeah? And all this desperation brings out a red flag for a bank or a money lender. Oh, and they say that this person is risky because he's shopping mm -hmm. around for debt. He can only survive when he, he operates on, on debt. He doesn't have any cash flow. And this is a risky person for me and I've got to increase his interest rate. And that adds to a negative credit score as well. Wow, that's incredible. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us, Maya. If People want to talk to you further about first time becoming a first time home buyer or building their credit score so that they can buy homes or buy a car. How can they get hold of you? They can contact me at the office 021 461 0065 or they can email me mayor, M E Y E R, at budgetfitness.co.za. And all those details are at the bottom of the screen. If you really love what Maya had to say, please keep watching. We'll be back with another episode next week and we're going to have way more video interviews with him. In the meantime, subscribe to the YouTube videos, connect with us on the Wealthy Money website. I look forward to hearing from you. Have a fantastic day. Bye!